This is a bellows pocket sample video. A bellows pocket is the kind of pocket that you might only find on a tweed or a working jacket. It is mu a much larger pocket because it expands, making it good for shotgun shells. I'm going to make up this pocket on a sample as though it were on a side body again, but this time I'm going to show a different method to the previous video. They are completely interchangeable though. Again, again, I suggest you practice on a rectangle of cloth rather than what I'm doing and just completely ignore me when I'm talking about the belly dart. Firstly, I'm drawing the pocket line where I want the pocket opening to be on my jacket. I have mine straight over the belly dart, but yours would be wherever your pocket is supposed to be. On the piece that we're cutting our pocket out of, make sure that you have at least 5cm on either side and below your pocket, and draw its length and breadth, say, 16 by 20 centimeters. Chalk 2 cm up from the top for the facing, then half a centimeter above that. 1 cm on either side of that 2.5 cm rectangle as seam allowance. On the bottom and both sides, chalk 2 cm and 4 cm from the finished pocket line. At the bottom corners of the pocket, draw a 45 degree line hitting the 2 cm lines you drew. From the intersecting points, another 45 degree line to the points that the finished pocket hits the 4 cm lines, which is also where the bottom edge and either side of the finished pocket lines intersect. Give those three lines on both sides a half cm seam allowance and a half centimeter seam allowance on each of the four centimeter lines. Cut along the seam allowances. If we had two of the pockets, then we could, then we would cut it out on the double and could just use a ruler and chalk to mark the lines onto the wrong side of the pocket beneath if we didn't want to mark stitch all of the lines. Baste a piece of linen onto the 2 cm section of the facing. My piece is 16 by th 3 cm. I align it half a cm below the top edge and 1 cm from either side. But it could be 18 cm by at least 4 and touch the raw edges and extend a little more into the pocket. Or be just 16 by 2 cm and only exist inside the rectangle that is the facing. We can make lining for this pocket. We would basically draft the pocket in the same way. However, when we are adding seam allowances, it only needs to be on the short corners where we will machine it, not on the top or the side seams. No two centimeters on the top of the pocket either. We don't need to make silesia lining, we'd make up the pocket in the exact same way with or without the silesia, but this way all of, the raw, all of the raw edges are covered inside. We can cut these out. Fold the corners of the pockets and silesia onto one another and pin them in place. Machine them together on the lines we originally chalked before adding the seam allowance. If we chalked the seams and seam allowances accurately, then we're able to very simply line up the raw edges and sew them down. We need to do the same to the silesia if we wanted lining. It's important to backtack on the fold and the raw side. Machine in straight lines and make a good right angle between the two lines.
where we machined, trimmed the corners outside of the stitching to about 45 degree angles and split the fabric in the corner down to the stitching. Iron the seams open. I'm pretty sure we are literally only able to press the seams if we have an edge board so that we can get into the seams on the fold. We also need to press over the half centimeter seam allowances on the three sides of the pocket. Press those towards the inside of the pocket. This is the most difficult to part to do. Most difficult with a lively, cl lively cloth that doesn't iron easily, like frescoes, that, that doesn't take creases easily. And more difficult if we don't have a hot iron. Fold the 2cm lines on the sides and the bottom outwards, pressing them firmly down as well. At this point, before pressing along the pocket perimeter, we flip the seam allowances the correct way out pushing the raw edges to the inside of the pockets. Fold the cloth along the pocket lines now, which will nicely set everything inside of the pocket. Iron all the way up to the seam allowances in the facing, folding those over, folding those over the linen, or with the linen if you used a wider piece. We can press them together and, as always, reinforce the creases we've given at any point if we feel we need to. Lastly, fold the half centimetre seam allowance along the top of the pocket down and iron that over too. Following which, iron the 2 centimetre facing over as well, creasing it on top of the bellows. It's practically the same with silicia lining, except we don't flip it inside out. Iron open the seam allowances where we machine the silicia. We don't have seam allowances on the three sides, so there's nothing to iron over, thankfully. I'm starting ironing it over the pocket lines, ironing it such that the seam allowances are on the outside, folding along the two centimeter lines so that our raw edges meet the pocket perimeter ironing those as well. Place the silicia into the main pocket, placing the bellows of the silicia inside of the main bellows, making it nice and snug in there. Just over the main portion of the pocket, I'm going to give it an easy baste just to hold them together. We can start to put the raw edges of the silicia under the folded half centimeter seam allowances, specifically at the top because we are tucking that away next. From here we could do exactly the same to the main fabric without the, the silicia lining if you don't want it. Baste the 2cm linen facing portion of the cloth over the bellows and make sure all exposed edges are hidden inside of it. Make sure as well that the seam allowances of the facing is folded up and basted down.
we will prick stitch along the bottom of the edge we fold it down. Fasten some thread on one of the top corners to fell down the side of the pocket, felling the facing to the front of the pocket as it were. That said, we only want to catch the bellow that's folded from the front. We don't want this, this stitch visible from the front. At the bottom of the facing portion, send the needle to the front of the pocket, prick stitch along the bottom of the facing, fastening it down. It's important that we sew all the way through to fasten the folded up seam allowance. When we get to the other edge, felling up the edge, fastening at the top, and this is the same with or without the silesia. Before I put the pocket onto my proverbial jacket, I am once again positioning the raw edges of the lining underneath the half centimeter seam allowances of the main pocket, removing the now superfluous base holding the facing since it's fixed down. This is another way to cover the belly dart on your jacket front if your jacket has a side body. So we need to cover and seal the gap where the dart is closed, which is currently held by fusing. Until you have a side body, you don't even need to think about it. We can cut a piece of lining or silesia about three centimeters wide and two centimeters wider than the open portion of the belly dart. Place linen behind the pocket opening in the normal way, covering the whole of the pocket opening. We do this either way. Similarly, we should also place some linen along the lines that we stitch the pocket to anyway. We put on the bellows pocket, like the patch pocket, after we attach the canvas, so we'd only add linen where there isn't canvas. With the silesia, iron over each side of the rectangle one centimeter. Once the linen over the pocket opening is basted, place the silesia onto the top of the belly dart opening with one of the long centimeter sides half centimeter over the gap or as long as you can comfortably get the closer the, the better the finish i'm chalking either side so that we can see the creases better and we know where to start and stop we want either side of the stitch to be a little past the gap so that it's completely covered Machine along the crease, which should be half centimeter or less above the cut, back tacking both sides. Fold the silesia down and along the seam allowances to top stitch all of them down in place. We might do best to iron the creases again off camera. I'm also cutting the corners below the machining so that they are very much hidden. Folding the silesia down and edge stitching along the three unsewn sides. It occurs to me now that we might have gotten a nicer finish if this patch is the whole width of the pocket and either side is covered by the bellow pocket. Like the patch pocket, this takes the pressure off of the fusing and the belly dart is being held closed between the linen and silesia. Place the pocket onto the jacket where you want it. If you have a belly dart as well, then line 
the top edge up to the top of the sleeve or lining. Firstly, we will take a stay of some kind to lay behind the perimeter of the pocket. Tack at the top of the pocket, following which start basting under the bellows. Using a pin to keep the rest of the pocket out of the way would be helpful. With the silicia lining, make sure that the raw edge is inside of the folded half centimeter edge of the cloth. Make sure that it is fully caught so that we get a good finish. At the corners, we can trim away some of the overlapping parts of the seam to help it sit more smoothly. At the bottom, remembering to place our next stay. To begin the end, anchor some thread at one of the top edges of the pocket on the reverse. Send the needle to the front of the top edge of the pocket, opening less than half a centimetre from the first vertical edge. We'll make a couple of fell stitches towards the first edge, changing direction and start felling the edge of the pocket. This is a very simple fell, we are just felling through everything, keeping the stitch as neat as we usually do. When we get to the bellows, we'll move the top portion of the pocket out of the way, and just felling along the edge where it's basted. If you come across some silicia sticking out from under the pocket, then just push it away and seal it inside of the patch. Back up the second edge the same way we did the first. Felling across the pocket opening about the same amount as when we started, sending the needle to the back and setting it on the reverse. We prick stitch as well, so fasten the thread again, this time level with where the bellows begin to open. Send the needle through to the front, but inside of the bellows next to the fell stitches, a little less than half a centimeter from the edge. We could put the pin back in holding the top bellows out of the way. We just do the prick stitch all the way around to the side where the bellows close under the facing, sending the needle to the reverse finishing the, that stitch. We could, remove the, we could remove the basting at this point. I seem to have a habit of removing the basting before I completely finish. Final stitch is along the loose flappy bellow. We'll prick stitch around the perimeter. I set the stitch about level with the bottom of the facing and send the needle through everything 
to the front of the pocket, quite close to the edge of the pocket. It occurs to me now as well that we should have started this stitch at the top of the pocket opening where we started the fell stitches and basted through everything down the facing and then to only the folded edge of the bellow when we got there, then the same on the other side. There's nothing particularly unique about this prick stitch, it's out of our control at this stage but it's advantageous to catch the silesia in this stitch. We'll finish the stitch in much the same way we started it. Remove any remaining chalk and basting. We can check that we did in fact catch the lining if we used it. Just try to pull it out. It should be held in place by the prick stitch we did after we first filled the perimeter. We can give the pocket an iron, giving the seam holding the pocket onto the jacket a separate ironing and the top bellow on top of it. And that's a good pocket.